So one application of logarithmic functions is the Richter scale. So let me write this down, the Richter scale. And if you've heard of this before, this is the system we use to measure the intensity or the magnitude, might be the better word, of earthquakes, right? And on the Richter scale, each earthquake of a particular magnitude is 10 times as intense as an earthquake with one lower magnitude. So for example, a magnitude 4 earthquake on the Richter scale is 10 times as intense as a magnitude 3 earthquake on a Richter scale. And we actually have an equation that represents this idea. It's that the intensity of one earthquake compared to the intensity of another earthquake is equal to 10 to the exponent the magnitude of the first minus the magnitude of the second. And so if you wanted to know how many more times intense is one earthquake than another, you could plug their magnitudes into here, right? And then you could solve this. And that would tell you how many times more intense one earthquake is versus another earthquake, okay? There's also another equation which says that the magnitude of a particular earthquake is log base 10 of its intensity. So if you know the intensity and its appropriate units, you could figure that out. So let's do an example of this, right? And we'll see how it works. So let's say the question is, how many times more intense is an earthquake of magnitude, uh, we'll say 9.5, than an earthquake of magnitude, um, let's make something up, 7.8. So how many times more intense is an earthquake of magnitude 9.5 compared to an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8? So what you're looking for is that I1 over I2, because that would tell you how many times more intense one is than the other, right? That's the ratio you're looking for. So you say this is equal to 10 to the exponent of 9.5 minus 7.8. We want to know how many more times the 9.5 is. So the 9.5 goes on here, so it goes in your M1 spot. Okay, you calculate this, and you're going to get 10 to the 1.7, which is equal to 50.1 approximately. So you could say that in general, uh, earthquake 1 is 50 times as intense than earthquake 2, if you're going to compare them. So even though the numbers look similar, like 9.5 and 7.8 aren't that far apart, it really represents an intensity difference of 50 times, right? And so that's part of the reason that we have this scale is because earthquakes range, you know, so drastically in their intensity that it's helpful to have a scale that takes into account those big differences. Um, let's look at another example. And for this example, we're not going to look at earthquakes, um, but rather another application, which is the decibel scale. Decibel scale, this is talking about the loudness of something. So just like the Richter scale, you could say that the intensity of one compared to the intensity of another is equal to 10 to the exponent of your decibels of the first minus your decibels of the second thing divided by 10. And the reason we have to divide this by 10 is because of the units, decibels, right? You could say this is equal to 10 to the exponent B1 minus B2, B1 and B2 being bells. But we typically don't measure things in bells. We use decibels instead, which it's like using kilometers and meters, right? Same idea. Decibels are the most common, so we have to divide by 10. But otherwise, it's the exact same formula as for earthquakes, right? Because it's working on a logarithmic scale. Now, currently, this is written as an exponential, right? you could rewrite it to be a logarithm, right? You could say that log base 10 of I1 over I2 is equal to decibels 1 minus decibel 2 divided by 10, and you could multiply both sides by 10. Therefore, saying that 10, log base 10 of the intensity ratio is equal to dB1 minus dB2, now this is, it's basically the same formula, right? We just rearrange some things, but this can be useful in itself depending on what givens you have and what you're trying to find. 
right? So this is another version of that same formula. It's just rearranged a little bit. So that's another one you might see. Now let's actually do some examples using these, and we'll try to solve a question. Um, let's say we're told that a whisper is measured to be 30 decibels. That's how loud a whisper is. And we're also told that a chainsaw is measured to be about 100 decibels. So looking at this, you might guess that a chainsaw is about three times a little bit more louder than a whisper, but that doesn't really make sense if you think about it, right? Think about how quiet a whisper is versus how loud a chainsaw is, and you'd be correct because this is on the decibel scale, right? So 100 decibels actually represents a massive increase over 30, right? Because again, every time you're going up one, like if you think about the magnitudes of earthquakes, if you go up one magnitude, you're increasing by 10, right? If you go up by one bell, you're also increasing by 10. Um, but we're working in decibels, of course, right? So for this, let's say they ask you, how many times as loud is a chainsaw compared to a whisper, right? How many times as intense is that sound? So you would say I1 over I2 equals 10 to the exponent 100 minus 30 divided by 10. If you calculate this, you're going to get 10 to the exponent 7. That's a massive number, right? That's 10 million. So a chainsaw is 10 million times as intense, the sound it makes is, uh, when compared to a whisper. And that makes sense, right? Now, we have another equation here which says that the loudness of something in decibels is equal to 10 times the log of i plus 12. And i is the intensity measured in watts per meter squared. So this is an equation that we have. And this is really handy to have, of course. And another equation that you have says that the loudness, again, in decibels, is equal to 10 times log of i over i naught. i naught being sort of a standard that you're comparing to. And that's typically 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter square. Okay. And so using this information that we have, so these are both equations that aren't as common as the first equations I showed you, but you can still use these for certain things, especially this one here. You can figure out some cool things, right? You can answer some questions. So let's say we're given a question like, how many decibels, how many decibels is a machine whose sound is measured to be 20 watts per meter squared. So that, that's the intensity of the noise that they measured, right? 20 watts per meter squared, that's how much energy you know, per area the sound is making. And the question is, how many decibels is that machine sound, right? How loud is it? How loud does it sound to us? Well, you use that equation where you say the decibels is equal to 10 log of the intensity, which is 20, plus 12. This is what we use. And the decibels are going to equal, if you calculate that, 133 decibels. That would be your answer. So that's just using this version of the equation up here, right? That's all you have to do. Now, these two equations are obviously related, right? Like if you see that this is 12 and that this is 10 to the negative 12, that's not, you know, a mistake. That's not a coincidence. It's because, you know, this is derived from this or vice versa, right? They're just rearranged versions of each other, okay? So, with that in mind, you can solve questions like this, where you're given an intensity, and you have to figure out how loud it is in decibels. All right. Now, the final application I want to look at is as it relates to the pH scale. And you might be familiar with this already, depending on if you took chemistry class or not, um, or if you recall, you know, grade 10 science. But basically, the pH scale works like this. Um, and it aims to measure the acidity of different substances. And so on the scale, it goes from 0 to 14, with 7 in the middle, right? 7 being neutral. So you have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let me write those in there, just like that. They're supposed to be evenly spaced, so pretend that they are. And then 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? Just like that. So these are the pH values. So if you say something has a pH of 7, we're talking about this position on the scale. 
Now, what does the scale actually represent? Well, underneath, we can write out what this is actually talking about. Um, I'm going to write some numbers here, 10 to the 0, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, and that just keeps going on, right? At 7, you'll have 10 to the minus 7. At 14, you have 10 to the minus 14. You can do that everywhere if you want. I'm not going to write them all out. Um, but that represents the concentration that you have of H+, plus, right? Hydrogen ions. So these terms on the bottom represent the concentration of hydrogen ions, or H+, plus, and the units are in moles per liter. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you have 10 to the negative 14, that's a very tiny number, right? That's a very small percentage for a concentration, 10 to the negative 14. That means there's very little H plus in your substance. Whereas over here, 10 to the 0 is 1. That's 100%, right? So this means you have a very high, very high concentration, okay? So on the left here, what we say is that it's very, very acidic, your substance, because it has lots of those hydrogen ions, right? And on the far right, you're going to be very, very basic, or you might describe this as being alkaline. So you might describe this as being alkaline. So these are very much alkaline substances, where these substances over here are acids, right? They're very acidic. And so if you're familiar with chemistry, this isn't going to be new to you, right? But what's interesting is if you look at these numbers, like if you look at 10 to the negative 10 compared to 10 to the negative 9, if you look at those two numbers and compare them, 10 to the negative 9 is 10 times as big as 10 to the negative 10, right? If you think about what those mean, like if I say 10 to the 0, 10 to the 0 is 1, 10 to the negative 1 is 0 0.1, 10 to the negative 2 is 0 0.01. So this is 10 times as big as this, which is 10 times as big as this. So every time you move over one to the right, your answer is shrinking by a tenth, right? Like it's becoming one tenth of what the number on the left is, right? If you go to the left, your concentration is going up 10 times. Like from seven to six, your concentration goes up 10 times. From six to five, it goes up 10 times, right? From eight to seven, it goes up 10 times. Whenever you go from the right to the left, the concentration is increasing 10 times, okay? That means this is a logarithmic scale, right? Right? So 9 isn't just a little bit bigger than 10, it's 10 times as big. So the same idea as the magnitudes on your Richter scale, your decibels, uh, all these different things we've looked at, it's the same idea. This is a logarithmic scale. So hopefully that concept makes sense. And with that, we can actually make some equations. Right? We can say that when you want to compare the acidity of two things, so let's compare the acidity, what we're really doing is comparing the amount of hydrogen in one substance to the amount of hydrogen ions in another substance, right? And we know what that is, right? It's 10, right? The, the concentration of hydrogen ions is 10 to the exponent of negative whatever the pH is, right? Because if you look at the scale, the concentrations on the bottom, if you have a pH of 3, the concentration is 10 to the negative 3. So it's 10 to the negative whatever your pH value is, right? So for this equation, it'll be 10 to the negative pH 1 divided by 10 to the negative pH 2, okay? And if you remember your exponent rules, that's just going to be 10 to the exponent of pH 2 minus pH 1, right? Because you would subtract this bottom one, minus a minus becomes a plus, right? And this one's still minus. So really, the equation you have here is the concentration of 1 compared to the concentration of another, which if it's more concentrated, it's more acidic, right, is equal to 10 to the pH 1, or sorry, pH 2 minus pH 1. So this is the equation you need to compare acidity. And then likewise, we can say, you know, um, that the concentration of hydrogen is equal to 10 to the negative pH, right, as we discussed already, that's just from the scale itself, you can see that. And if you rearrange this, Using a logarithm, you could say that pH is equal to negative log base 10 times the concentration. So if you have the concentration and you want to figure out the pH, you can plug it into this formula, right? As long as that concentration is in the units moles per liter. Now, this is obviously helpful and you have to know and be comfortable with this for, um, you know, chemistry class, things like that. 
Um, but for now, we just want to be comfortable with the idea that this is a logarithmic function, right? That's the idea here. And we're also going to be able to use this to solve some questions. So let's go ahead and we'll solve some questions now that we have these formulas. First question says, what is the pH of, here, let me write this out. What is the pH of, and then for part A, we'll say a solution, a solution with 0 0.000316 moles per liter of the hydrogen ions, just like that. What's the pH of the solution? Well, you just use your pH equation. pH equals negative log of the concentration, which is 0 0.000316, and the answer you get is 3.5. That's the pH of the solution. Not too bad, right? Okay, what if instead you want to know uh, what is the hydrogen ion concentration equal to when you have a solution with a pH of 11.6. So the solution has a pH of 11.6. What's the hydrogen ion concentration? How would you figure this out? Well, we have an equation for that too, which says that the concentration, that's what these brackets around the H plus represent, that's the concentration, is equal to 10 to the negative 11.6. Right? Just plug in negative the pH, and that's going to equal 2.512 times 10 to the negative 12, and this is in moles per liter, right? It's a concentration, so moles per liter. And that's it. Um, if I want to ask you one final question here, um, let's say we want to know how many times more acidic, so how many times more acidic is a solution with a pH of 4 than a solution with a pH of, uh, let's say, 10.2, right? Something like that. How many times more acidic is a pH of 4 compared to a pH of 10.2? Well, you'd say, okay, let's compare the acidities, right? So H1 over H2, that's equal to 10 to the exponent, 10.2 minus 4. If you use your formula correctly, right? That's going to be 10 point, or 10 to the exponent 6.2 which is equal to 1,584,893.192. So it's over 1.5 million times as acidic. Pretty crazy, right? But again, that's the power of using a logarithmic function, right? You can use relatively close numbers to represent very large differences in intensities, right? And that's your final answer. So hopefully all these questions have given you enough exposure that you're comfortable um, figuring out word problems within practical situations, right, using logarithmic functions.